So you want to start a podcast, but you don't know exactly who you're going to be talking to. And even if you didn't know who you're going to talk to, you don't know how you're going to, to, to engage them when you're actually talking to them on a podcast. Well, today I'm going to give you my five special tools that's going to help you figure out who you're talking to, get clear on who you're talking to and how you're going to address them. And it starts right now. All right, so guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm Derek Harper, owner and CEO of Transformative Media and the creator of the Table Builder Society and the 5P podcast system and the ministry growth system, okay? so a lot of things going on here, man. <laughs> uh, so today, man, we're going to be talking about uh, five, I want to talk about my power five, okay? The power five, the five things that you're going to need to do to get clear clarity on your audience Get clear so that you can start serving them at the highest level, of course, through your podcast. And when we do this, guys, uh, we are going to start attracting the people that we actually want to listen to our podcast. All right. This is part of the growth system. OK, so if we have a ministry growth system, uh, our 5P podcast system, the same thing. We want to know who we're talking to. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, we have things that they that resonate with them so that they come back after, you know, time after time after time after time uh, to come listen. This is the reason why you come back to this podcast time after time after time after time so that you can hear the things that you need to hear to help you on your podcast journey. All right. Cool. So um, there, there, there it, it took a long it took a long time, guys. For me to figure this stuff out and come up with my power five, man, I, I was I was trying to figure this stuff out, man, probably for about four years, <laughs> like, and it just started to click, you know, over the last couple of months or so. Well, not last couple of months, probably like around middle of twenty twenty three, it started to make sense, right? And I've been doing it since like, I actually been doing this stuff since probably like two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen, and man, does time fly. <laughs> but but I, I, I've been trying to do it and it was really, really a, a, a thorn in my side <laughs> because I'm like, I'm skipping over this part. I don't care about that part. I'm just trying to sell my product. And really, the thing about selling your product, the thing about growing your ministry, the thing about starting your podcast, all of those things is that it is so customer, listener consumer based it has nothing to do with your product it has nothing to do with, with your ministry it has nothing to do it is customer based. like we need to serve the people who um they're going to patronize our business the people who are going to donate um and pay tithes into our ministry we need to figure out we need to figure out what they want we need to figure out who they are we need to let them know that we know who they are and we need to let them know that we understand them, we get them, all of that good stuff, okay? And so I've created my thing that I call my power five and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use this, all right? So over the course of those years, guys, that I've been, been working and trying to figure out all of this business stuff and all trying to figure out this growth stuff and uh, I, I've heard a lot of people talk about that they're going to grow, that they that 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 we need to figure out who we're talking to, get clarity on them. We need to figure out who they who they are. We need to figure out what they do, um, what jobs they do, who do they listen to. But and I thought I used to think like this does not make any sense. Um, I don't know who, who where they work, and I was thinking from like, hey man, just show me how to make the money, <laughs> you know, and. I didn't, I didn't know those things, but it wasn't until it wasn't until I made some I made a sale one day. All right. And I made this sale to this guy and this guy, he, he, he said to me um, after I made the sale, he's like, you know, the thing that made me go with you is because I heard your story and it sounded similar to mine. And um, I like that. And so that's why I went with that. I went with you and your story resonated with me. And that was the first time I realized, man, I really need to narrow down who I'm talking to, 
so that they know that I'm talking to them and then my story will resonate with them and then I'll make more sales. That's like, that's like really, that's, that's the thing that made the sale. It wasn't like the product or anything. It's like, no, I thought the product was good as, as well. But what really made me say yes was that you understood me, you got me, and I, I resonated with your story. Like, it's a kind of a similar thing that I'm going through. And if you had, he's like, if you had the success, I know that, that we can have a similar success too. So I was like, oh, that's the key. That is the key that's going to get us where we need to be. All right, that's the key. Guys, like literally, we have to resonate with these people, right? So let's think of it in terms of ministry. You know, in ministry, um, we're talking to a, a variety amount of people. They have a variety different a variety of different jobs, right? They have a variety of um, different economical situations, okay? But one thing is that one thing is in, that, that they all have in common is everybody has a little piece of them that's broken, all right? And it's broken in usually a couple of different places. It's either in health, it's in wealth, or it's in relationships. That's typically the things that are broken. Those are the top three things that most people are broken in. When they come into your ministry, when they listen, when they listen to you on their, on your ministry, in your ministry, when they listen to you, when they come to your church, um, they they are going to be they're coming in there, they're hurting. Right. We know this. That's one of the reasons why we go to church, because we need to get filled up. Right. Uh, one of the reasons why we listen to pastors and evangelists and things like that, because we need to be filled with the word. Right. Um, they are coming because they're either having trouble in a relationship. They have some health problems or they're financially in some uh, in some in some problems. Most of the people are in financial problems. Have financial problems, but again, you could have a wide variety of people, okay, a wide variety of people, uh, and that have different type of jobs, different economical situations. But somebody has pain somewhere, okay. Somebody is dealing with something somewhere, either health, wealth, or relationships. All right, so we need to know who we are talking to, okay. We need to know who we are talking to, so that we can actually resonate with them, tell stories, give examples um, that that resonate with people, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be our story. It could be a story of another person. It could be a story of somebody in the Bible, all of those different type of things, all right? Typically, if you if you're, uh, have a ministry, it's going to be something from the Bible, okay? Somebody from the Bible, or it can be a testimony that, uh, that you have. But you know every time somebody steps through that door, sometime, every time somebody tunes into your, to your live, is that they're dealing with a problem. OK, so that's what we can all agree on when it comes to that. So I want to give you really quickly here my five, my power five. OK, this is near and dear to my heart. And I learned this again through through a myriad of different people. Uh, let's talk about Russell Brunson for one. OK, he's like, you got to know who your people are talk, talking to. Like, you got to figure that stuff out. And I'm like, uh, I'm skip it. He's like. I'm telling you, do not skip this. And once I started to, like, I'm in a program right now with the guy, um, and we he wanted us to do that as well uh, again. So I did that as well again and pinpointed who I was talking to. And, guys, I'm telling you, exponential growth, okay? <laughs> exponential growth just because I know who I'm talking to, all right? And if you want your podcast to do, to do well and you want it to grow, you're going to have to figure out, who you're talking to, and then do this power five. So I learned it from from Russell Brunson, um, Myron Golden, Eric Thomas, and all the other heavy hitters <laughs> that, that I've been listening to, like Jasmine Womack. My wife, my wife listens to Jasmine Womack. These are people that you can look up on Instagram. You'll be able to figure out. You'll be able to find them. Uh, and all the different myriad of books that I've read on business and things we learn. We have to figure out who we're talking to. We have to know, uh, we have to pick someone that we can, that, that we can influence because they're going to resonate with our story. Okay. That is the secret sauce guys. That's, that's that. This is really the secret sauce. This is, this is pay worthy. Like we should be charging you guys for this information because this is good information here. <laughs> All right. So um, let's talk about the power five. Okay. So there's five things that we want to know. There, there's there's tons more, guys, that you can add to this. But if you know these five things, okay, uh, 
another book came to my mind. Um, the art, uh, story, building a story brand, building a story brand, uh, Donald, I think his last name, I can't remember his last name. First name is Donald wrote the book. That's a very good one. And it really walks you through these things. Okay. But that was, that was, that was another influential person, uh, influential book that helped me with this. Okay. So if you know these five though, this is the basis of your ministry. This is the basis of your business. This is the basis of your, your listener or viewer audience. Okay. Number one, who are you talking to? All right. Number one, who are you talking to? What group or subgroup that you are talking to? This is going to be very, very important. All right. We're going to have to figure out who we're talking to. We need to find the person, the people that we actually want to talk to. So if it might be entrepreneurs, it might be busy moms. Okay. Um, there was a story of this, of this lady who was trying to, to, to reach out to people on YouTube. And she was just, she, she knew that she was a nerdy kind of quirky type type of girl, but she tried to be professional. She tried to do her makeup and get her face ready and um, be this person who she wasn't. And cause she was trying to attract people, just the, just people, right? She was just trying to just attack, attack, attract just people. And, it didn't work for her because one, she wasn't being her true authentic self. And then two, nobody could resonate with her because she was just being like a, a, a new show host basically <laughs> on her thing, on her podcast, on her uh, YouTube channel. And so what she did was she was like, you know what? I'm not even going to try to dress up anymore. I love doing this stuff. So I'm just going to make videos. Whoever watches them, watches them. And so she started being her own, her just normal quirky nerdy self and guess what she started to attract quirky nerdy other women and then she kind of did hers backwards then she started to realize oh i need to be talking to quirky nerdy people and so she kind of that's when she changed the name of her of her youtube channel to like the nerd something i can't remember what it was but it said nerd something so now she's attracting nerd like nerdy people right people who geek out on the things that she geeks out on Right. And so she's going to attract those type of people. Right. Because they, because her story resonates with them. So you need to know who you're talking to. You need to know who you're talking to so you can attract those people. OK. All right. Number two, who or what is the villain? Right. Number two, who or what is the villain? What is the thing that keeps them up at night? All right. What is the thing that keeps them up at night? All right. So if we're talking in terms of ministry, because I know we didn't give it really a, a ministry one on the first one, but on the second one, who is what is the villain? We know that we know that Satan is the villain. All right. But there's other things that can be villains. Right. Poverty is a villain. Uh, limited, limited thinking is a bit is a, is a villain. Um, your there a person's negative temperament or, or a person's temperament can be a, a villain. All these different things are villains. All right. So it depends on what your message is that day or what you're trying to convey, which would be the villain. So if you're if you're a pastor, if you're a minister, evangelist, your villain is going to change from time to time. OK, so so if it's if it's if it's if it's health, it's diabetes is a villain. Uh, things like that. OK, you guys understand. All right. Relationships. Um, we don't want to make people villains. We want to make traits villains, okay? When we're talking about relationships, we want to make traits villains, not people, all right? People are not villains, all right? We already know this, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the principalities, all right? The things the, the things of, uh, the things that are unseen, okay? The spirits, it's spiritual warfare that's going on. It's never the people, right? The spirits is the things that influence us. So, so spirits are the villain, all right? Devil is the villain, the things that come about, those are the villains, all right? Um, that brings me to number three. What is the old vehicle? What are the ways that the people are doing to get rid of the villain, all right? What are the things that people are doing now that's not working, okay? Um, so if it's in business, they might be trying to, you know, run ads and it may not be working, all right? It might be that they are passing out flyers <laughs> in their business. That may not be working. It may be people who are uh, in your ministry who are praying for praying for money and it's not working. Why? Because we don't pray for money. We pray for wisdom, 
right? We pray for the wisdom to get the money, right? We got to think a little bit higher, right? So, um, so what is the old vehicle? What is the thing that they're doing now that's not working, okay? All right, and then that brings me to number four. What is the new vehicle? What is the new thing that you're going to bring to them that is going to work, all right? What is the new opportunity that they have that's going to work? Right. I just said one for ministry. You've been praying for money. Instead of praying for money, what you need to do is you need to pray for wisdom. All right. If you pray, if you pray for wisdom, God will give you the wisdom to go make the money. All right. If you tithe, <laughs> if you tithe into this to this ministry, God will open doors for you so that you can get more money. God will start opening doors to you for a better job. God will start opening doors for you for your business to start profiting more. God will open doors for you to get the things that you need. It may not necessarily be money. It might be, it might be that wisdom, right? It might be that wisdom that you get that or that idea that pops in your head that makes you a million dollars, right? So what is the new vehicle? What are, the, what are you going to do differently instead of that? Now, those new vehicles for you as a pastor, for you as a, uh, for you as a pastor, for you as a, as, a, uh, as an apostle, for you as a minister, all those things, those vehicles, again, those vehicles, new vehicles are going to change, all right? Those new vehicles are going to change. And those vehicles for you guys are those principles, all right? Those principles that you're going to be giving out to people, all right? Those principles, those principles that you pull from the Bible, right? So if you have, if you're talking about relationships and say, hey, here's a red flag in a relationship, somebody who's always, you know, talking about other people i don't know right and so what's that people are always talking about and how do you how do you approach that you usually approach that with either either falling in line with it or you approach it with you know cutting the person off like maybe we don't need to cut the person off here's the principle set up that the bible says about about uh people and you know gossip so here, here are the biblical principles. Instead of you going out and gossiping with them, here, use this. This is the new vehicle. This is the things that we're supposed to be doing. All right? You guys understand? You guys do this all the time. You do this all the time. But now that we see it and we're cognizant of what we're doing, we can now put our things together in logical order when we're talking to people on our podcast so we can bring more people in. Okay? Does that make sense? Obviously it does. It does. All right. And so then number five, it brings me to number five. What is the final outcome? What is the final outcome that they're going to get when they listen to your podcast? All right. What is the final outcome they're going to get when they listen to your podcast and they change their life? When they go to your ministry and they change their life? What is that final outcome? All right. And we understand that ministry is and ministry and uh, spirit, spirituality is an ongoing thing. But we want to paint a future outcome picture for them so that they can see what's going to happen. So, for example, if you have if you're if you're going with the kingdom, kingdom financial um, uh, blueprint, the kingdom financial blueprint. All right. Maybe you have a series on kingdom finances. All right. How, how do you put your finances together in the kingdom? The final outcome is that you're going to you're going to be doing your finances the kingdom way. Which is the right way, which is going to show it's going to show in your bank account some extra dollars there that you didn't notice you had, right? Or things are going to start exponentially growing because you're doing it the right way, right? You're tithing and you're getting more back, okay? Every time I tithe, God always shows up for me, okay? I'm just saying, right? I'm not saying go after the money. I'm saying this is a real thing. It works, <laughs> like literally. Every time I tithe, the things come back more and more and more, okay? So that's another principle. That one's on me, guys. <laughs> okay, so that's the five things. So today we talked about the five things. Number one, who you're talking to. Number two, who is the villain or what is the villain, all right? Don't, don't villainize people. Villainize, villainize the, the, the behavior, okay? Don't villainize the people. Villainize the behavior, okay? People who do things, it doesn't make them a bad person. It's just... You know, it may not be in their character. They might be acting out of character or it might be their character. And we still need to villainize, villainize the action and not the person. OK, who or what is the villain? Number two. Number three. What is the old vehicle? Uh, number four. What is the new vehicle? And number five. What is the final outcome? If you would do this, I submit to you <laughs> that you'll have a better podcast. You'll know exactly who you're talking to. You know exactly what they need and you'll be able to serve them at the highest level. 
All right. And that's going to result in more people wanting to listen. That's going to result in people wanting to share. We know this because it happened in Solomon. Okay. And it's going to get you to the place that you want to get to so much faster. All right. So with that being said, man, remember everything that you do today affects your future. So remember tomorrow, I'm Derek Harper and I will see you next time.